the impact I think has been has been really vast and 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 deep. But I think we've got some some lessons learned coming from that. You know, we're still very much learning. We're in that in, in that state. But um, you know, really, I've been so impressed with the, the speed with which uh, companies have mobilized and pivoted to work from home. And in particular, as we talk about the CX space, uh, it's quite remarkable for organizations, particularly large organizations like yourselves, that have had the, the capability to, to swiftly move and 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 mobilize and, and get folks set up. And it's been it's been quite encouraging and and also quite remarkable. Um, so yeah, I think you know first lesson learned is just about how how great that the teams and the partnerships have been. I think you know longer term, what we will start to to see is is an exposure of some of the the difficulties, not of of just work from home, but of our processes. There, you know, broken processes, difficulties in in customer service management that perhaps don't come to light when you're not in an environment like this that's stressed under so much volume and so much disruption and and difference in in the environment where we're working. So um, I think that this is uh, a a time to be looking at our our inefficient workflows and this is really the burning platform to take a hard look at how we can redesign things moving forward to, um, you know, to to make things more efficient and and even better uh, as we see the light at the end of the tunnel. So, and I'll, I'll pass over to Steve to comment on that next. Thank you, Melissa, and I, I love the word that you use there, mobilization. Uh, and Amit, to, to turn to your question, um, I think that the big thing that sticks out for me is how many BPOs have had to mobilize, as, as Melissa just uh, discussed briefly, and how well most of them are doing it. Now, within that, in the short time I have, it occurred to me the biggest theme for me or idea that I've been thinking about is I, if we stand back and we think about society and the economy in general, um, you know, what we're seeing out there because of COVID-19 is this question around, um, it's really a test for gov- governments um, from citizens, you know, uh, and the most important thing that governments can do is, is to overcome any sort of trust deficit that there might be as they um, try to lead people through this crisis. It's very much um, uh, per- perhaps going forward a redefining of the social contract, if you will. So now think about BPO in the context of this, right? Um, we may, and what I think we're seeing in real time is this test of BPO providers, a, a BPO diplomacy, if you will. How well are they protecting their employees and their jobs? Um, what types of systems of social protection, if you will, are being put in place? This is a huge test. Um, I was pleased to see in your uh, release uh, this week, guys, from Teleperformance, that the uh, European Works Council, for example, had very good things to say uh, as representatives of 22 countries on w- what Teleperformance, how they are grappling with this crisis. And this is really important, and, and I want to continue to to discuss this um, uh, uh, over time. And I've been writing about it and thinking about it and blogging about it. And uh, I'll end uh, my final point here is that just yesterday, we saw protesters here in Washington, D.C., a rainy Washington, painting in front of Jeff Bezos' house at Amazon, protesting the conditions there. And so um, uh, uh, is there a trust deficit? And how is it being addressed? How is that social contract and worker contract uh, being addressed. That's the big theme for me. And with that, I want to uh, hand it over to Michael DeSales for some of his thoughts as well. Thanks uh, very much, Steve. I I echo your notion of of, um, maybe lack of trust. But what I've learned is that not only BPO companies, but enterprises across the globe really do care and are passionate about their employees, about their employees' well-being. You know, they want to reassure people around the globe that if they do have to come to work, they've got a safe place to come to work each day. And, you know, it's about communications, about preventative health practices, following recommendations from the World Health Organization, and and more. 
One thing that I'm seeing that makes me smile is there is kind of a new level of cooperation between competing BPOs. A lot of the CEOs know each other, and so I think they're sharing not only learnings, but also opportunities to improve the business and finding ways, especially with the movement for um, remote agents, how to do that in a way that makes sense for the employees, makes sense for customers, and still can provide that customer experience we've been looking for. So again, a priority to care for employees, care for customers, and proactively reaching out and proposing plans of action. I, I think that you know disaster recovery, business continuity planning, um, you find out if it works or not, and you continue to refine the plans you have in place. Uh, the last thing that I've learned is <clears throat> that this wider adoption um, will happen with automation, probably more self-service options, including online community forums, perhaps virtual assistants, and uh, of course, chatbots. <laughs>